Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TTT Tom's Tech Time. Welcome to the most epic drone fight in 2016, DJI Phantom 4 fighting against the unique Typhoon H. Let's just see which one is the better drone. Actually, you should keep one thing in mind. You are watching one out of 10 videos in total that I shot about these two drones. You can find the videos right there in the playlist or you can find the entire video a link at least pointing at it in the video description below and next to that you have all product links in the video description below as well and right now enjoy the episode don't forget to leave a thumb up and don't forget to subscribe to never ever miss any upcoming episodes again stay tuned fly safe let's right now take a short look at the tech specs and after that we'll compare some footage promised both cameras offer 4k video recording with maximum 30 frames per second they both capture photos at 12.4 megapixels, which I think is pretty weak. The shutter speed of the Phantom 4 can be set on values between 8 seconds until 1 8 thousandths of a second. This means that we can create photos at night and in the dark with ease, creating beautiful light streak long exposure shots as well as normal daylight photos and videos. The shutter speed of the Typhoon H is very limited. The slowest shutter speed is 4 seconds only, the maximum is 1 8 thousandths of a second as well. This means that you can film and take photos during daytime, but at night you have less options than with the DJI Phantom 4. The higher the bitrate, the more information is stored within a file, the more detailed it looks like, the better its quality. Let's compare the bitrates and at the same time the color profiles of both drones. The DJI Phantom 4 offers 10 picture styles in total. Three rather professional styles for grading and a real cine look as there are D-Log, d, -Log, d like and non and several useful and some not very useful other picture styles. I would stick and stay with D-Log though, even a beginner can perfectly colorize it using a saturation and contrast tool and it will look way better than some oversaturated footage right from the camera. All picture styles deliver 60 megabits per second, which is quite good for such a small camera. The unique Typhoon H comes with only four picture styles installed. Natural, Gorgeous, Raw and Night. The weird thing is that they deliver different bitrate values. Natural has a bitrate of 37 megabits per second only. Gorgeous has a bitrate of 50 megabits per second but looks useless as it is completely oversaturated. Raw sounds promising but has unfortunately nothing at all to do with a real raw format as it delivers the lowest bitrate of all picture styles 24 megabits per second only. And finally Night offers 50 megabits per second. The only picture style one can really use during normal daytime filming is natural, meaning that you will lose many details compared to DJI's Phantom 4. There is another criteria we want to discuss, the field of view. When it comes to aerials one could basically say the narrower the field of view, the more professional the look. The wider the field of view, the more does the image look like it was filmed with a crappy action camera only. The DJI Phantom 4 has a 20mm lens that delivers a 94 degrees field of view. Unique's Typhoon H has a 14mm lens that delivers a wider field of view of 115 degrees that reminds us of cheaper action cameras. As a filmmaker I can only recommend the DJI Phantom 4 due to the narrower look, even though I think both manufacturers should add an optical zoom to get even narrower shots done at some point. But for now the DJI Phantom 4 is ahead of the Unique Typhoon H. The wider field of view of the Unique Typhoon H has another serious disadvantage. The wider a lens, the more distortion, the more roundish and unclear do the corners look. Let's zoom into the right corner. I taped a Z-Man star to the wall. Can you see how clear its lines look like on the image above? And how fuzzy they look like when being recorded with the unique Typhoon H? Let's take a look at the other side. Can you see how clear the church looks like when being filmed with the DJI Phantom 4? And how fuzzy and unsharp it looks when being filmed with the unique Typhoon H again? Next we can see that the DJI Phantom 4 mainly focuses on the objects in the distance, while the stones very close to the lens are somewhat unsharp. That makes sense as normally objects filmed with a drone are further away than 20 cm only. The unique Typhoon Age mainly focuses on the stones though, the background is somewhat unsharp. This can be a serious problem when creating aerials. Let's now take a look at some test footage. Both drones were set on auto, same conditions. I chose a more difficult terrain with differently exposed areas. The sun was still very bright while the ground was darker already. You can see the DJI Phantom 4 creates a somewhat nicely exposed image as we can see details in both ground and air. No crushed blacks at the bottom and no crushed whites at the top. The camera of the unique Typhoon H only tries to correctly set up the sky 
which results in a complete dark ground, especially when the camera focuses towards the sun. To me, the footage of the unique Typhoon Age is useless. If I would use it on a job, they would definitely not pay me at the end, which would even be understandable. Another shot, from bright to dark and dark to bright. The Phantom 4 smoothly fades its settings while the camera of the unique Typhoon Age adjusts them way too harsh you can see the different steps of the settings. This creates completely useless footage, looks choppy and unprofessional. On the way back to the top we noticed something else. Let me pause the video right here. While the DJI Phantom 4 has a proper white balance throughout the entire shot, we can see that the white balance of the unique Typhoon Age is confused changing from the correct value to a warm one, making the footage look reddish overall. You would need to invest a lot of time in post-production to fix that. Finally, let's take a look at a night shot I recorded with both phones. The DJI Phantom 4 delivers a somewhat sharp result throughout the entire frame. We see different colors, the red flag at the top of the building, the yellow lights of the casino, only the street lights look a little too bluish to me. The image of the unique Typhoon Age is fuzzy and unsharp. And even worse is the color, it looks like someone has applied a golden filter to it. The red flag at the top has a golden touch, the casino has a golden touch and the fountain has a golden touch as well. All details are lost. After watching the test footage one can clearly say that the Seagull 3 Plus of the unique Typhoon Age is a weak camera, especially when it comes to all the um, auto functions. But one, of course, could just set things up manually um, on the remote controller. But there's actually another problem. While the DJI GO app shows us a histogram, next to that the Zebra, the overexposure warning, and next to that grid lines, there is nothing like that on the ST16, made by Unique. And finally, I can say that as a professional, I could not work with the Typhoon Aegis camera. And um, I think you can start with the DJI Phantom 4 and you can grow bigger and bigger, maybe Inspire 1 after that, and maybe S1000 or something like that. But I think the unique Typhoon 8 has such a bad camera, I really didn't expect that. And um, I must say that remote controller and camera are the worst parts of the unique Typhoon 8. And they promised us a flying camera and they gave us a flying device with a very bad camera. And um, I'm very unhappy with the camera made by Unique. The camera of the DJI Phantom 4 creates an overall sharp and distortion-free image. At night it performs well, even though not perfect. The Go app offers many settings and small tools to help us capture the perfect shot. The narrower field of view offers a more cinematic look. Overall, it's a really nice camera that handles the various lighting situations with ease. It earns 8 points. Unique's camera is a true disaster. It can't handle the easiest situations in auto mode. There is no tap to expose feature, it has a very visible distortion at the corners of the image. And at night it creates ugly colors and a lot of noise. It reminds us of cheap action cameras and the app offers no tools and very limited settings only, while the bitrate can be called a bad joke. It earns three really gracious points. Thank you guys for watching this video. Feel free to leave a thumb up and feel free to subscribe right now to never ever miss any upcoming episodes. Again, if you feel like you can't resist right now and you need to purchase your copter of choice, you can find the product links right down there in the video description below. And if you still don't know which copter to buy, you should continue to watch my videos as there are nine leftover videos that actually compare these two drones. You can watch them right now and I'm just gonna stop talking and we're gonna continue next video.